So, how do psychedelics work? Technically, all classical psychedelics work by antagonizing or stimulating serotonin receptors in our brains. Now, there are 15 different kinds of serotonin receptors in our brains. Psilocybin works specifically by stimulating the 5-HT2A serotonin receptors. Chemical interactions in the brain are extremely difficult to visualize, but this is a computer illustration of the psilocybin molecule being accepted by the 5-HT2A receptor. When the psychedelic molecule is accepted by the 5-HT2A serotonin receptor, we see many things happen in the brain. Perhaps most importantly, we see a rapid increase in activity all over. But we also see a marked decrease in activity in the default mode network. So what is the default mode network and how does this relate to the psychedelic experience? Although an older model of the brain focused on individual sections of the brain, more modern psychology and neuroscience focuses on networks in the brain and the way that regions pass information to one another. Now, the default mode network, or DMN, was only recently discovered in 2001. It's been described as the CEO, or the orchestra conductor of the brain, because other networks of the brain communicate via the default mode network. So, how and why do classical psychedelics agitate serotonin receptors? Well, this is because the classical psychedelics closely resemble serotonin. You can think of them as doppelgangers. So here on the left, we can see the similarities between the serotonin molecule and the DMT, psilocin, and psilocybin molecules. Now, some contend that this similarity might just be a total random accident. Others say that we may have actually evolved to accept psychedelics. Others say that this coincidence is the work of God. The 5-HT2A receptors are found in large numbers in the cortex, the outermost and evolutionarily most recent layer of the brain. The neuroscience here gets pretty complicated, but any agitation of the 5-HT2A receptor has been found to decrease activity in the default mode network. Therefore, taking any classical psychedelic will also, in turn, decrease activity in the default mode network. But what does a decrease in activity in the default mode network have to do with the psychedelic experience? The default mode network plays a fundamental role in the formation of mental constructs. Mental constructs can be thought of as shortcuts that help us more efficiently navigate the world around us. They save the brain energy. This is the role of the default mode network, to save the brain energy by creating mental constructs. For example, let's consider a tree. We've probably all seen thousands of trees. We know that trees pose no threat to us, and we know that they likely won't be used as a tool. And for all intents and purposes, most of us feel that nearly all trees are similar, interchangeable. To know that it's a tree, we do not have to analyze the bark, the leaves, the branches, the shadows, the mold. If we did have to analyze these things, this would require a lot of brain power. So instead, in order to save processing power, the moment our brains recognize that this thing we're looking at is a tree, our brains create a mental construct of a tree. We don't have to see the bark. We don't have to see the branches. It's a tree. This is a thing we all know. And this is the work of the default mode network. And this does save the brain quite a lot of energy, but it also limits the brain's ability to recognize and perceive the depth of reality around us because we're only ever focusing on these mental constructs. So when children see a tree for the first several times, they haven't yet had the chance to develop a mental construct of tree. And they therefore see many, many more details of the tree than adults do. So the experience that adults have of looking at a tree is just fundamentally different than the experience that children have when they see trees for the first time. It's been said 
that by reducing activity in the default mode network, psychedelics restore a sort of child's brain. And this adult brain and child's brain comparison is used often in psychedelic discourse. It's been said that the adult brain can narrowly focus attention on a single goal. And because of this focus, it produces far fewer errors and processes take less time and less energy. This is a good thing. But the adult brain is also less creative, less able to think outside the box, and sometimes too rigid for unique problem solving. The child's brain, in comparison, is said to be more widely diffused. It can take in information from virtually anywhere in the field of awareness. This process does cause more errors. It takes more time and more energy to be taking in so much information. But the child's brain is also more creative in many ways. Several studies have shown that children are far better at some problem-solving tasks when thinking outside the box is required. For example, in a study conducted in 2000, Alison Gopnik and her team gave children a toy box that lights up and plays music when a certain combination of blocks is placed on top of it. When Gopnik's team programmed the box to only play music when two blocks were placed on it, four-year-olds figured this out much faster than adults. The four-year-olds tested out way more far-out hypotheses that increased the chances of finding the right answer. Far-out hypotheses that simply never occurred to most adults. Some psychedelic researchers draw a useful distinction between the spotlight consciousness of adults and the lantern consciousness of children. In his 2018 book, how to Change Your Mind. Michael Pollan writes, quote, baby consciousness is so different from adult consciousness as to constitute a mental country of its own, one from which we are expelled sometime early in adolescence. Is there a way back in? The closest we can come to visit that foreign land as adults may be during the psychedelic journey. The default mode network is referred to by some neuroscientists as the me network. This is because the default mode network plays a role in the construction of mental constructs, including the mental construct we call the self or the ego. Another result of decreased activity in the default mode network is decentralization. Under normal circumstances, all communication between networks of the brain passes through the default mode network. The communication is centralized. But when a psychedelic is ingested, activity in the default mode network decreases. Therefore, the brain becomes more decentralized and networks of the brain begin to communicate to one another independently without first passing through the default mode network. And this may be why people on psychedelics often report experiencing synesthesia. Synesthesia is a condition in which one sense, for example, hearing, is simultaneously perceived as if by one or more additional senses, such as sight. Because the networks in the brain are communicating with one another independently, some sensory perception communication networks may get crisscrossed. And due to this decentralization, we also find increased brain entropy. According to a 2018 fMRI study by Glenn Sachs, entropy measures the variety of configurations possible within a system. And recently, the concept of brain entropy has been defined as the number of neural states a given brain can access. So the adult brain is more ordered, more rigid, and less malleable. The child's brain is less ordered, less rigid, but more malleable. Researchers have found, using fMRI, that high entropy is positively correlated with general intelligence. Psychedelics decrease activity in the default mode network, and decreased activity in the default mode network results in higher entropy. As said by Michael Pollan, by deactivating the default mode network, psychedelics, quote, loosen the ego's grip on the machinery of the mind. The experience of taking psychedelics is often likened to a blizzard on a ski slope. 
through years of repeatedly going down the slope in the same way, the grooves in the snow have gotten deeper and deeper. Even if a skier wanted to go in a different direction, they couldn't. They're forced to take the same path because the grooves are just too deep. It's been said that traditional psychedelics act like a blizzard covering the tracks so that new tracks can be discovered and followed. Now, it's important to note that psychedelics are not the only things that reduce activity in the default mode network. There are many other things, including meditation, breathing exercises like holotropic breathwork, sensory deprivation, fasting, prayer, overwhelming experience of awe, extreme sports, near-death experiences, all of these also have been found to decrease activity in the default mode network. So, psychedelics work by decreasing activity in the default mode network, which has been found to increase brain activity, increase brain entropy, increase general intelligence, and decrease the formation of mental constructs, including the mental construct we refer to as the self, resulting in the ability to perceive more details in the world, but also requiring more energy. Many other activities do result in the reduction of activity in the default mode network. There's no doubt that in the near future, we'll continue to learn more about these substances. But for right now, I hope you have a better baseline understanding of the neuroscience behind how psychedelics work.